boys and girls, it's Miss Goodfriend, and I bet you're wondering where I am. Well, right now, I am blending in with my surroundings so you can't see me. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Before we do that, let me appear. And what the topic we're gonna be covering in science this week is what we call adaptations. Adaptations is something that we did cover in school before we left but I know it's been a while, we might need a refresher, so we're gonna go over that today. The first thing we're gonna do though, is look at how we can access our textbook at home. So everybody got a copy of this textbook during the year, it's what we read in, some of us did activities in it, and now it's available for you to be able to use from home. So there are a few steps that you need to take to be able to do it. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the student page from the school webpage, okay? You're gonna go to Clever, you're gonna log in with your computer login and password, and then you're gonna click on Think Central Science Fusion, okay? So again, we're gonna go to the student page first. Right here, the first link is Clever. Okay? I am gonna be logged in as me today. Hey, okay? it's gonna come on up. And once you're in Clever, you're gonna find this Think Central Science Fusion. Okay, it's under the PVES District one, the same place you find Moby Max, Epic, and it's gonna be right under there for you. Okay. So when you log in, I've logged in before, okay, there are gonna be some settings that you need to fix. Okay, it's for students, teachers, and administrators. We all are gonna fix the same um, categories. So it's gonna come up with, you need to select first, you're gonna click United States for your country. You're gonna click Virginia for your state. Okay. You're gonna click Prince William County for your district. And then our school is clearly Potomac View. Okay. After that, you're gonna to wanna to click this Remember My School so you don't need to go through this process every time. Your username is your lunch number, your password, is your lunch number, okay? So very easy to be able to log in because those are two that you know very well. You use them a lot to get into everything. Okay, so you're gonna log in and your page is gonna look like this. You're gonna wanna click on my library. Okay, you're not gonna have things to do, at least unless your teachers assign them to you. You're not gonna have scores or anything. You're gonna click on my library then you're going to have a few options here for you. So here's the student access, here's the student edition. Okay, so maybe if you want to read the book, you're just going to want to click on the student edition. If you just want to see what's available for you, click on student access and then all of our different topics that we've covered all year, all of our units are going to pop up for you. Okay? So if you just want to look at unit one, two, three, so we're doing adaptations this week. Okay, so that would be under the plants and animals. And this week we're gonna do structural adaptations, what we call physical adaptations. So if you want to read the book, you're gonna click on student edition. You want it to get even more student edition. If you wanna to listen to it while you read, you'll click on student edition audio. Okay, that won't pull up the book for you at the same time, but it will read it to you. So you're gonna to have to open student edition and student edition audio to be able to listen to it and look at it at the same time. So if you click on student edition, it's gonna pull up this book right in front of you and you will be able to see the same book that we used in class. Okay. So structural adaptations, and then this is the same book we saw in class. So if you're interested and wanna relook at some of the things we did during the year, go for it. There's also these digital lessons available for you. Okay, and I know my class, we did some of these digital lessons during the school year, okay? And it's those same ones that we used to do up on the smart board all together. So that's also available for you if you click play on this digital lesson. So I just wanted to show that to you before we got started in our adaptation lesson today, okay? So let's head on back. So the first thing we're gonna look at is what are adaptations? What does that mean? That's a big word. What does that mean exactly? And in order to figure that out, we are going to watch a study jams video together that's going to tell us 
a few of our terms that we need to know. Look at all these butterflies. I've never seen this many at once. Yeah, there have been a ton of them lately. Must be the time of year that they migrate. Zoe, butterflies don't migrate. Monarch butterflies do. Really? Why? Well, migration is an adaptation for monarch butterflies. An adaptation is a change a living thing goes through, so it fits better with its environment. But I thought adaptations were physical. Well, some adaptations are physical, but others are behavioral. Physical adaptations happen when organisms gradually develop physical characteristics that help them survive. The bright orange color of these butterflies is a physical adaptation. The bright color warns predators that the butterfly is poisonous to eat. Colors can make snapping a pick pretty difficult, too. When colors help an animal blend into its surroundings, they're called camouflage. Camouflage is a physical adaptation that allows an animal to hide from its enemies or from its prey. Tiger stripes are camouflage. So is the color of a deer. What about chameleons? They can actually change colors. Yep, that's a great example. So is color the only physical adaptation? No way. Lots of physical traits are adaptations, like lungs and limbs in amphibians. How else would they survive on land? Well, millions of years ago, amphibians were underwater animals. The lungs and limbs they have today are adaptations that happened over a very long time. As their environment changed, they were forced to adapt. When organisms pass on important traits that help them survive to the next generation, it's called natural selection. The needed traits are selected and passed on, and other traits that aren't needed gradually disappear over time. Cool. So, if those are all physical adaptations, what are adaptations like migration called? Oh, yeah. Adaptations like migration are called inherited behaviors or instinct. Inherited behaviors are actions, things organisms do to maximize their survival. The butterflies migrate to survive? Yep. Butterflies migrate to warmer climates where they can survive and find more food. Birds migrate too. Even some kinds of fish, like salmon, migrate. Are there other inherited behaviors? Yeah. Hibernation is an inherited behavior. So is playing dead. Playing dead? That's right. Animals, like the possum, play dead to protect themselves when a predator is near. They freeze. Freeze! Wow, great pick. Yep, thanks. I think I get adaptations now, too. Organisms improve their chances of survival in certain conditions through adaptations. Some adaptations are physical, and some are behavioral. Adaptation doesn't happen overnight. It takes many generations to occur. Through natural selection, organisms pass down the traits that increase survival to future generations, while less useful traits aren't passed on and eventually disappear. Nice work, Mia. You rocked that. Thanks. All it took was a little focus. So, like the video said, an adaptation is any trait that helps an animal survive. So if we look at this picture right here, we can see that the Arctic hare lives in snow and ice. Less heat escapes from its small ears than from the larger ears of other hares. Its small ears help it stay warm in the cold. So that's a trait that helps it survive, those small ears. On the other hand, the jackrabbit lives in the desert. Okay? Its long ears contain many tiny blood vessels that help remove heat from its body. This helps the jackrabbit cool down in the heat. So the Arctic care lives where it's cold. Okay? It needs something to help it stay warm. The jackrabbit lives in the desert where it's nice and warm, which means it needs to find a way to cool down in the heat. So they both have different adaptations that help them survive in their environment. Then we also have these two animals here. So we have a picture of a horse. It says, what animal is this? It has flat teeth. The flat teeth allow it to grind grass. So if it had sharp teeth, it wouldn't help with its survival because it needs those flat teeth to be able to grind that grass down to be able to eat. On the other hand, the tiger eats animals such as wild boar and deer. The tiger's sharp teeth help it tear meat. Okay. So again, two different types of teeth both shape differently to help those two animals survive in their environments. So today we're gonna to be focusing on physical adaptations. Next week, we're gonna focus on behavioral adaptations more.
So physical adaptations are special body parts that help an animal or a plant survive. Those adaptations are something you can see. And on the other screen, it showed the ears of those two animals, the teeth, you can see those, those are physical. Okay. So here are a few other examples. The fish um, have scales for protection. So that outer layer of scales help the fish survive in its environment, it's for protection. A rattlesnake rattle scares predators away. So you can see this rattle right here. Predators can hear it. Okay? It's on the outside of the body. That is another physical adaptation that helps the rattlesnake. And then the last one, we look at a rhino. It has very thick skin, which helps it survive. It doesn't let predators eat it very easily because that skin is so thick that it helps protect those rhinos. So there are two specific types of physical adaptations that we learned about. And they talked about one of them in the video we watched. And I'm sure as soon as I say the other one, you'll know exactly what it is. The first one we know that I was using at the beginning of our video is camouflage. It's how something can hide by blending in with its surroundings. So we look at two examples over here, okay, one, shows this snow leopard right here. It's very hard to see it. it. says, look at the color of this snow leopard's fur. Look at its spots. Its camouflage helps it blend into the background of snow and rock. This helps it sneak up on its prey. It's not able to be seen very well in that environment. It's camouflaging in with that surrounding. And then the other one is the orchid mantis. And it's the same color as the flower it's sitting on. The insect is perfectly camouflaged. So right here is this insect, very hard to see it, blending in with the flower it's sitting on. The other type of physical adaptation is mimicry. And I talked to my class, I'm sure everybody heard that word mimic means to copy. So mimicry is when a harmless animal or plant makes itself look or act like a harmful animal or plant. Okay? If it's harmful, other animals are going to leave you alone, even if you're not harmful. So two examples of that are the monarch butterfly and the viceroy butterfly. So eating monarch butterflies makes birds sick. Birds avoid eating them. The viceroy butterfly looks like the monarch, so birds leave them alone also. The viceroy is totally harmless not poisonous, will not make birds sick, but they're left alone because they look so much like the monarch butterfly that birds are not going to want to even mess with the viceroy because they're afraid they're going to get sick. If you've gotten sick by something before, not too quick to eat it again, okay? Wasn't a good feeling the first time, you're going to leave everything alone. The other example is this frog fish can look like a rock or a sponge. It can look like algae. Animals try to rest on the rock, others try to eat the algae. The frogfish traps and eats them. So it makes itself look like that rock or that sponge or the algae, and it helps them survive because other animals come and rest on the rock, it's not a rock, and then that frogfish is able to eat that animal that is resting and be able to survive. So camouflage. Hey, some animals can hide without trying. These animals are hidden by their shapes, colors, or patterns. Such disguises are called camouflage. So let's look at two videos right now. Okay, so remember, camouflage is blending in with its surroundings. It's hidden by their shapes, colors, or patterns, making it very hard to see them. So two examples of two different animals blending in with its surroundings. I know about a month ago, I think I was on a walk with Miss Gazikas, and we were walking and I look over at a tree and there is this giant branch that is actually a giant snake just resting in the sun 
I was terrified, but I almost didn't see it because it looked like it was part of the tree. Turns out it was a snake. Ugh, not happy. <laughs> But it did a very good job of blending in with its surroundings, and I barely knew it was a snake. So the other one is mimicry. Some harmless animals look a lot like animals that are harmful to predators or that taste bad. Since predators don't know which animal is harmful, neither animal gets eaten. Imitating the look of another animal is called mimicry. So the octopus moves like jellyfish. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced a jellyfish. They hurt. Those stings, not so fun. So animals, just like humans, don't want to get near jellyfish. So when that octopus moves like a jellyfish, it's not being harmed. Okay, so again, the cuckoo bird using mimicry, the sound. So today we learned about two terms, camouflage and mimicry. Those are the two main types of physical adaptations, and that's what you are going to be looking at more in your choice board this week. So you have three assignments this week, just like you always have. The first one is going to be a camouflage or mimicry sort on Wixi. Hopefully you were able to get in for math this last week. Um, and be able to do the fractions lesson on Wixi. If you weren't, I hope you contacted your teacher again this week. If you're not able to get into Wixi, please contact your teacher, okay, and they will help you. I'm going to show you again how to get into Wixi also. Okay. Your next option is going to be to watch the camouflage video on Brain Pop Jr. And then there is a game to go along with it. You have to find the animals that are blending in with their surroundings. Very tricky. I tried it. I could only find like three animals. And then your last option is going to be to go to Moby Max and assign to you should be a lesson on physical adaptations. So those are your three choices for this week. So let me show you how to get into this camouflage or mimicry sort on Wixi. So I'm already logged into Clever because I had to show you for this thing, set scroll. So the first thing you're going to do, I have Wixi at the top of mine because I favorited it, but you guys might have to scroll down. And if you look, my Wixi is all the way at the bottom. So scroll down to wherever it is. So you're going to open Wixi. Again, mine's going to look a little bit different because I have teacher view. Okay? Your should just pop up right away under your assignments. If it is not popping up, please let your teacher know. They will assign it to you. It's called camouflage or mimicry. So your assignment this week is you are going to do this sort. This side is camouflage, this side is mimicry. You have 10 different scenarios on the side over here. Your directions say drag and drop the scenarios into the correct column. So you're gonna read the first one. It says the snowshoe hare has a white coat in the winter and a brown coat in the spring. So I'm gonna is that white coat in the winter and brown coat in the spring more of that, that snowshoe hair trying to blend in with its surroundings and use camouflage? Or is it trying to mimic another animal to stay safe? Hmm, think about it. Once you know, you're gonna take the words and drag it to where you believe it should be and leave it there, okay? So if you think it should be camouflage, put it there. If you think it should be mimicry, leave it there and then you'll go on to the next one. If you're not sure, well, leave it right where it is and come back to it when you know. The Viceroy butterfly copies the pattern of the poisonous monarch butterfly. Well, considering that's one that I just taught you, I hope we know that that's either camouflage or mimicry. Again, you're gonna drag it into which section you think and be done with that, okay? After, I don't think it's gonna show up for me, but under file, you will go to mark as complete and then your teacher will be able to see what you have done. So that's your first choice. Your next choice is on Brain Pop. Again, if you're in Clever, right here, Brain Pop Junior, click on it. It will also be a direct link on your choice board. So if you don't wanna search, then it will also be a direct link. 
Uh oh, I do not want that. Nope, no, nope. sorry. Okay, so you can either go to science and then animals and camouflage, or you can just type in camouflage. Again, if you're on the choice board, just click on it, it should bring you right in. And if you need to sign in, then I also included that information on your choice board. So you'll watch the video on camouflage and then scroll down to games. If something like this pops up, just click on where it says Adobe Flash Player, click allow, and then your, oh, you might have to do it again for whatever reason. Okay, then click games again and it should come up for you. Okay, so do you see the animals? Let's see, and then you'll go through and press play and try to play the game. Okay, and then your last assignment will be on Moby Max. Again, if you're in Clever, it is right there for you. You'll go to Moby Max, go to your assignments, and it's the physical adaptation. Okay. So I hope that you enjoyed our lesson today. Okay. If you have any questions for your teachers, let me stop sharing. If you have any questions for your teachers, reach out to them, let them know. I, I know, I know, I know I say this every week. We want to see your work. We are very excited, which is why I'm trying to put some stuff on Wixie, make it a little bit easier. But if it's not, that Wixie assignment is also able to be printed on um, your computer, on your phone. You can open it and just write it down, whatever you need to do to be able to do it. So I hope that you guys have a great week. Um, when you're on your walks this week, if you look around and see any animals that are camouflaging with their surroundings, take a picture, send them to your teachers. Again, I, we love to see whatever you have to show us. So I hope you have a great week and I will see you later. Bye.